In 2012, 95,000 children were killed worldwide. 3,000 of those were killed in the United States. When we find skeletal child remains, our best way of identifying the victim is to estimate their age at death. When we estimate age, we assume that our individual is typical of the reference population from which we develop the method. For child homicide victims, this may not be the case. The methods that we use for this were developed over 50 years ago. Since then, changes in nutrition and healthcare have led to increased final heights and generally faster growth. Tests on these original methods have shown that 25 to 50 percent of the original population uh, would have been considered stunted by today's standards. So obviously, this, these methods may not be appropriate to modern use. So what is an appropriate reference sample? This is where my research comes in. You'd assume that the next step would be to develop a method based on modern average growth, right? Well, it might actually be a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, research suggests that children uh, who are victims of child homicide are from a lower social economic background, and that this social economic background leads to higher risks of malnutrition, abuse, and emotional stress. For forensic anthropologists, these words are red flags. We link these words with slower growth and uh, shorter stature. A quick example. This map of Vancouver behind me shows the percentage of children for each neighborhood that fall below, fall below the 10th percentile for physical development. In Strathcona, about 30% of children fall below that 10th percentile. In Kitsilano, which is a comparatively better off area, that statistic drops off to about 5%. So how do we develop better methods? And what exactly is the difference in growth? These are the questions I am asking. I am collecting height and development data from, from uh, autopsy reports and CT scans from across North America. By comparing these data points to national averages and using statistics to interpret them, we can quantify exactly what the growth difference is between the forensic and the general populations. Using that information, we can develop better, more accurate methods. These methods have a wide range of impacts. On a forensic level, um, they can help us identify child victims more quickly and more efficiently. On a social level, we can really quantify the impacts that social economic status has on a child's physical growth. But also on a humanitarian level, I mentioned that about 95,000 children were killed in the last year. In 2012, sorry. That's a lot of children, but it's also a lot of families. By developing better methods, first for North America and then for the rest of the world, we can help a lot of families find answers and